Bible, you saw all. Yeah. The first place to start is to adopt the principle of refusing and reducing. What does it mean? It means that if I don't need something, I shouldn't get it. Hello? Hi. Uh, you get what I'm If I don't need something, I shouldn't get it. Alright? So it's not like everything I see I grab and the rest of them. So when I refuse or how I reduce, I have played a role in managing waste because what I refuse will not end up to become a product or a waste to me. You understand what I mean? For instance, if I need just one phone, I need one phone to function, or maybe I need two phones to function. Now imagine me getting five phones. I really don't need what? Five phones. But if I have five phones, it means ultimately, yeah, these five phones will become what? Waste at some point. You understand what I mean? So, when you also look at uh, maybe going to the market, um, there's what they call, there are some people who they refer to as impulsive uh, shoppers. Eh? You've gone to a, a mall, and maybe that day, I mean, that was product, and by reducing your consumption, by reducing your what? Consumption. You know? There's a place I, I visited and then I was served a meal and the meal was just too much. And then when I said no, I need it to be cut, they said no, that in their place, if you are served so much, you understand, I don't finish it, it is their pride that they have a lot. So cultural, you know, considerations can also affect some of, you know, but in the other place, they, 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 they will say, we'll give you a little so that you can finish it and ask for more. So if that's how you ask for more, and then they give you what is you know proportionate to your request than giving you excess and you don't even what need it. So that's why you have refuse and what reduce. And then the next two talks about reuse and repair. Reuse and repair. And it talks about it refers to the increasing usage of the existing product, which or without the situation of certain parts of the product. So what it means when you talk about reuse and repair? Have you ever gone to the market and then I know women do that a lot. My wife does that, and you know this um, bag, this buckle bag. You understand? When she goes to the market and she buys one, when she comes home after she has unpacked, she will clean it up and keep to use for another word. Now, but imagine any time you go to the market, you carry, you buy, you know, the buckle. Back. You understand? Over and over again. They are not helping with what we do, we use what concept. So there are certain things you can get and you might have to use it what again. For instance, you know, the bottled water. There are some people who will get, um, what do you call, every time they need water, they go and get bottled water. And once they are done drinking, they dispose of it. But some other people will rather have like a water bottle. If they need water, they pour it into the water, but they, they, they fill it up and then they take. So they are reusing. You get the concept. So by reusing, they are reducing what waste because you don't have to get this same product over what again. In some cases, you still have people who maybe you want to eat. Uh, maybe you go to your office and you want to eat your lunch. Some people will come with the food from home. Others will have their flask in the office and you want to buy they will go to that place and then they will put the food in their flask so that they don't have to keep um, getting um, a pack over and over again. So the examples are just so many and that is what we are using. And repair, there are some people that if their phone has any slight problem, what happens? They change it, alright? Some people it's a lifestyle, it's a trend to them. Why there are others? They will repair this food over and until before we say, I don't tire. Allow me to die. <laughs> Come by. Uh, hey, the bag. People will just commit suicide and say, I'm dead. I don't to be used over and over again. You know? But sometimes when you have that tendency to repair, you know, you are also helping. You are helping. You are helping. And that's another principle of your waste management. So all we are saying, you see, in managing waste, we, each of us, we play a role because your actions to a large extent affect what will be churned out 
as what you call household waste or municipal waste. waste. And then the next one talks about repurpose and recycle. It means maximizing the usage of the material in the product. You know, it also talks about that same thing you have discarded, like this. You see, there's a company that I will take this and recycle this, and then this bottle will be used again. In fact, how do you even know that this is not a recycled what bottle? Okay. Instead of getting the raw material, as far as I know, plastics are a byproduct of a good oil. Alright? So if plastics are a byproduct of crude oil and you keep tapping from the crude oil in order to make a bottle, you waste a lot of energy. You spend a lot to keep breathing from the soil. But if you recycle a huge quantity of your plastic, you understand, you are saving the environment and you are spending less resources. And that is the beauty of recycling, which we shall discuss further. And then recover is the least prepared and the least efficient way in managing waste. It involves recovery of embedded energy in the waste material. Recover talks about, you know, sometimes the waste that you generate, you can try to recover energy. That material may not be useful anymore but it has energy and you can recover the energy. A very typical instance is people who use compost to generate electricity, all right? You have a farm. In fact, I've seen them in a situation where someone converted the seaweed into a compost, uh, a biomass. So all the food that comes from the seaweed, they are put into a particular chamber and then the heat is processed. You don't need your food anymore, it is not useful, but it contains what? Energy, it contains methane, and then they are, you know, processed, and then it generates, you know, the biogas that is used to fuel his, um, what do you call it, to fuel, to light his house, as well as, um, as a fuel for his um, gas. Yes, so that's it. Let's go to the next thing. So that's waste management, the uh, seven hours. Now, there's another area we've talked about here, which is waste management principles. When you're talking about the principles of waste management, you look at number one, the waste hierarchy. When we talked about the seven arrows, I said it started with the first three arrows. And those three arrows are what? Reduce your waste, I mean, reduce your product. Reduce your product and recycle your product. And that's it. So when you go home today, think about it. Just look around you at home on your office. Are there items you can what? Reduce. Are there items you can reuse? Recycling is a more, it involves a lot of processes that you cannot achieve as an individual. But reducing and reusing are things you can do as an individual. Now, there's also what we call life cycle product, resource efficiency, and political case principle. All of these are just principles in waste management. For life cycle of products, it talks about how you design your product in such a way that from the time this product is manufactured, distributed, and used, what happens to the end product, which is your plastic? How do you now put it back into the system again? So that it will now become a raw material. Resource efficiency is a clarion call that the rate at which we are utilizing the resources in our planet Earth, if we don't slow down, it is really going to affect our planet. Alright? In fact, somebody said, use what you have on planet Earth, alright, with the mindset that you are a tenant and they are going to leave it for the next world generation. generation. Are we together? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you come from a village and you have a huge forest, and you feel that the best thing is to keep chopping down those trees, you were born mm -hmm. and you met that forest, mm -hmm. and you took it upon yourself that you must chop down all the trees before you die. When you die, the generation that is coming after you, mm -hmm. what would they find? You know what I'm trying to say? So for instance, tree planting, you know, talks about resource efficiency. So you use, have that understanding that why you need to have your economic growth and your development, you cannot do it at the expense of the environment, at the expense of natural world, 
resources. Because most of the things we are looking at that we use to make all the things that makes our lives better, some of them are non renewable Some of them are finite. Some of them are finite. Alright, there was a time when you want to wear a belt, you must get the original leather belt. But that leather belt is the skin of an animal. Have you wondered that if I keep if you keep buying leather belt, one day that if it's crocodile, one day the crocodile will go extinct. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Some of us wear some of these very fanciful uh, what do you call it? Hand uh, bangles. bangles and the rest of them. Some of them are from you know elephant tusks. Some of them are from rhino tusks and the rest of them. And keep people keep killing these animals just because of their tusks. In fact, in our office in Abuja, sometimes when our officers go for inspection and then they get the seeds, they bring it. In fact, one of the days I saw a rhino, I mean a, an elephant tusk, it was just more than half of my height. And you know, elephants, most elephants come with two now. You understand? So for that tusk, you kill a big elephant. You don't need the meat, it's just one. The tusk. And who is the end user? Maybe one young man or one young woman that likes those. Um, fancy things. So resource efficiency is about why you want to grow economically. It cannot be sustained if you don't take into consideration that these things are finite and one day they can all you know vanish and they cannot be reflected. So Luther Pay's principle talks about the fact that the person who pollutes is mandated to pay for the impact of the environment. So what it means is the company that produces this, they produce this and you buy it, right? Mm. Now, they know that the, at the end of the day, this thing will find its way to dump sites. So what they have produced will end up creating waste. So they have to pay a certain amount of money so that that money can be used to take care of that waste their product has once generated. And that is why anything regarding waste management and recycling is big one and we shall still find out. Let's go to the next slide. Now, waste segregation, I won't draw so much here. It's all about separating your waste in such a way that it will be very easy to work, dispose of. Right? Sure, everybody here has seen this kind of color thing. But it's unfortunate that we don't have this kind of things in our neighborhoods anymore. In our neighborhood, we might have one, and everybody drops everything inside that one bin. It shouldn't be so. In an organized environment, there should be, co there should be color bins, all right? And those color bins should say, okay, if it is plastics, put them there. If it is, um, what do you call it, garbage, put them there. If it is electronic waste, put them there. So that the people that will come to collect this waste, it will be easy for them to sort it at the landfill or at the dump site. But we don't operate that level here, which is a very bad situation. Let's move to the next slide. Now, waste disposal. All of these are part of waste management. Alright? They are all part of waste management. How do we dispose of waste eventually? I'm sure most of us are familiar with this. Okay, but apart from me, everybody else from Akwaibo, I want to believe. Yes. Well, how many of us pass through Abba before you get to Akwaibo? <laughs> eh? <laughs> okay, pass through Abba before you get to Akwaibo. You know, over here. No, is it over here? Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, but it's not over here. There's one place, is it around that place, it's your my area. Mm. You understand? Mm. Yes, yes. In fact, there was a time, it was a very high mountain of dogs and the rest of them. You know, it's very unnecessary. Those ones are actually dump sites, you understand? But this is a landfill. Every country has a landfill. Landfill and dump sites, they resemble them because you can see all this kind of thing. But the difference between a landfill and a dump site is that the landfill, that area was developed for the countries. And then there are some engineering works that has entered that process in you know, building the landfill site in such a way that even when they want to burn this up or separate it, all of those segments are in that facility. But what we have, like what you see in Abba, is not like this, so it's just an empty lab that you keep dumping and dumping until it becomes what? A mountain. That's why we stated that there are no landfills in Nigeria, but monitored, but mostly on monitored dump sites. sites. Now the other part of disposing of waste is incineration. Incineration has to do with 
putting the waste in a particular chamber and subjecting it to heat so that it will burn it up, all right, in a controlled manner. But these ones are always not recommended in some societies because it has to be very high temperature. And if you don't put it under a controlled environment, you know, if you don't separate your waste and just burn up everything, you are still polluting the water. So that has to be Landfill. But this landfill, now people go there, separate the waste, sort them out, and then it becomes another interesting thing. Let's see the next slide. It becomes a resource for international waste trade. How many of us are aware that waste is a lot of money globally? Waste is a lot of money. You may not be able to see this, but let me tell you what it is. It says, top plastic waste trading regions. The ones in red are the regions that have too many wastes and they cannot even uh, manage it. So what will they do? They will, other countries will come and buy the waste for money and then, what do you call it, either recycle or deal with the waste however they can. So if you look at the red here, that is Canada up there, and mm. the one there is US. But look at the other one that you guys Mexico. Alright? Now look at the other one. That's, that should be Europe, maybe the western part of Europe, right? Mm. And then that's stuff. Then this country should be India, if I'm correct. And some of these are uh, Southeast Asian countries. And then this is uh, Australia. This should be Singapore or Malaysia, something like that. Now notice the pattern. Most of the countries in red are the well to do countries. Overpopulated countries, basically. Yeah, the not necessarily overpopulated, but are the developed countries. Canada is developed, US is developed, Mexico is not in their league. That's the pattern. <laughs> Europe is obviously developed, but Turkey or whatever is not in their league, per se. Mm. India is not in their league. All these countries are not in their league. So, what is the pattern? Yeah, the pattern is that the developed countries. You understand? Ship some of their waste to the undeveloped world countries. Now, for these undeveloped countries, it means money. But the problem with this now is that you are bringing your waste to another world country and you are it for yeah. So that's about the international waste trade. That is trade there. There are some countries stretch their waste to other countries to work, process and then make use of. And that is what happens here. Let's go to the next slide. Now, what are the waste management challenges in developing countries? Meanwhile, Nigeria is not the only developing country. We have a lot of countries that are developing, especially in the Asian region. That's why I took this picture, so that we will not assume that these are the these are the things you see only in Nigeria. You see this this kind of pictures even in some of these Philippines and the rest of them. We have people go to scavenge at dump sites to scrap something that they can work use. So what are the common challenges, whether you are in Nigeria or you are in Philippines or Taiwan or whatever? Now, our waste collection service is exhausted. Alright? Our, our service are just not there. If you live in Abuja, you, know, you realize that maybe these AEPB guys, from time to time, they are supposed to come and share to dispose of your waste. But sometimes you don't come and share and sometimes your waste will be there and you need to work and see them. But what they expect are because the services you know is as if they are overstretched and are not able to deliver on that. But we say if adequately managed and uncontrolled downside is a problem, we just like that about as an instance. Sorry, I'm question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Thank you so much. Since you say there's a lot of like interaction. Yes. And uh, that particular point, the, the first, first one, one yes. the exhausting the waste collection services. Yes. What could be the cause? Is ah. it okay, go ahead. Uh, is it lack of government will? Mm -hmm. Or is it that the manpower required is not sufficient enough? Okay. Because I for now I believe that APB is the only government approved yeah. to collect this waste. Okay. And I happen to be a, a victim of okay. this particular one. Okay. Okay. My okay. Hotel management. Okay. So okay. what do we say that okay. is really the cause? 
apart from maybe don't make the patients. Yes, but all of them, all you have seen now, can also be the cause. You understand? Some of these things can also be a part of it. You understand? Now, it could also be that they are understaffed. Now, look at the population of Abuja. Abuja has, I don't know, people use them. Election data mm. for the population of Abuja, but that's for people I need to go. But Abuja should be nothing less than 6 million people living in Abuja. Alright? What is the staff strength of AEPD? That's something we take into consideration. Are they able to serve all the what neighborhoods? How many trucks they will have? How many dorm sites do they have? So when the population overwhelms the service, the service will collapse. You understand? And they are going to add other factors like the Nigerian factor, corruption, mm. all right? They're supposed to fill that belt. That belt is supposed to move on at a particular time. But for a good day, somebody else will do it. If the guy could not move, and all of these things, and then we have begin to prioritize, to prioritize. And so, okay, they will go to the uh, cream de la cream, to the Maitana and also to the They are living in Garuki, they are living in Luce, they are in trouble, you know? So all of those things can exhaust the waste collection services. You understand? Now, and that is also related to what you call poor waste governance. Alright, so maybe the authority there, you understand, their governance strategy is poor. Weak institutions. So the show that should monitor these guys because I believe that they contract it to people. Companies can come and register, if I am correct. You have waste collecting companies. You understand? They register with AEP and then they are allocated areas where they go. It's the work of AEPD to probably monitor them and ensure that they go at every time to do their job. But if the institution is weak and they don't monitor, all of these things will be what it is. And that's what we find in countries that are developing. Now, we also talk about calling on the resources and rapid urbanization. Nigeria is affected by this rapid urbanization. Every day, someone said to me, every minute or every second, the number of people are entering in Lagos. Alright? So, you now look at what is the infrastructure. Does Lagos have sufficient infrastructure to manage the waste of over 20 million people? That's a very big question. Lack of waste management education. That's why we must commend the um, ESCOs for having this kind of seminar. This is where it starts from. What is my own responsibility in managing what? Waste. You understand? A lot of people don't have waste management education. How many of us have seen people who have shops by the roadside? When they sweep, where do they throw their dirt? So the drainage. And then that is it. But that drainage is not the place where you should crash your waste. It's not the place. And now, at the end of the day, that garbage will, I mean, that uh, drainage or gutter will be filled up. And then when there is rain, the water cannot pass, they floods their shop. So we don't have waste management education. In the local countries, waste management activities are actually carried out by poor for their survival. For those of us who live in the suburbs, you don't have anything that will come to help us out. What do you have? Meshara. Do you understand? In a proper situation, it's not their job. Because those are going to even know how to handle what this waste. Is. Some of them will even carry your waste and look left and right and see an uncompleted building and do what and run is there. You understand? So that's where we are. Let's move on to the next slide. So all of these things are part of the challenges that we have. So we've done enough justice on waste. Let's now look at the recycling. Because one of the principles in waste management is you must reduce your waste, you must, re um, you must reduce yeah, your waste, you must reuse your, your materials, and you must what? Recycle. recycle. If you look at this picture, you see a number of them. Um, Buckets, they are plastic buckets, they have items. Now, the items you see here are items that are taken off from a computer, all right? This is a recycling plant. And this recycling plant, what they do is that they dismember the computer or the radio and then they now begin to sort them accordingly so that the ones that are wires or copper can be used. The ones that are gold, you know, in this um, computer, you have gold, you have um, some other precious materials that are in this computer. So they extract all of those things so that they can be further work for source. Let's go to the next slide. Now, I asked, I started by asking a question. What happens to the things you throw away? If you dispose them in the trash, your stuff will either end up in the dump site 
or you can find them in the shelf after a while. Those ones you find in the shelf are the ones that have been what? Recycled. For you to find them in the shelf, it means that recycling has, take, has taken place. And he said it is the process of converting waste material into new what? Materials and objects. That's just the simple definition of recycling. You convert your waste material into a new what? Material. I mean, a, a raw material. And that is the whole principle of recycling. So that you don't keep going back to mother nature to take away from mother what's nature. Because most times what you take from mother nature, you do not replenish it. And if you don't replenish it, and then the ones you have used, you dump it. One day, mother nature will say, I don't have any more to what give. So that's why you take less from mother nature, and then you now recycle the ones that you have. That's basically what recycling is about. Let's go to the next slide. Now, it has a lot of benefits. I decided to share this picture. Um, this is a tire, a used tire that was um, converted to a chair. So maybe if I have um, a relaxation spot and I decide to make this um, tire to a chair, it's a, way, it's a form of recycling. Now, in this case, the chair, the, the uh, tire is not used as a raw material to make another another tire, but it is used as a raw material to make another word product. Are we together? So that's a form of what? Recycling. Alright. Um, I don't know why that's shaking, but let's see if we can manage it. Now we say it comes a lot of benefits. Recycling saves materials, it helps to lower greenhouse gas emission. Alright? It can prevent the waste of potentially useful materials, yes? It reduces the consumption of fresh raw materials. And then it reduces energy, air pollution, and the rest of them. So recycling comes with a lot of what? Benefits. It comes with a, with a lot of benefits when you recycle in your goods. I, gave, I keep using this as a very typical example. These days, people recycle this. Have you even asked yourself why, you know, at some point um, we were using the bottles for our soft drinks, whether it is Coke or, you know, or seven of we use the bottles. Then after a while, we started using plastic bottles, right? Now, these plastic bottles, at some point, the Fanta was what color? Orange. Orange plastic. And um, Sprite was green plastic. All of them are plastic. But what brings about that coloration is the fact that certain chemicals have been added to that plastic bottle to give it the color that you desire. All right? But it became a problem for people who recycle. Because if you want to recycle a product, what it means is that you must subject that bottle to you know, the lowest processes that it will be converted to a new product. But now if you want to separate all the components of that bottle, and that bottle is colored green, for instance, Sprite bottle. Now it means that you must also separate the chemical that is in that plastic. And the process of separating that chemical is very difficult. So the best way now would be, instead of making it, uh, what do you call it, uh, green color, you make it your colorless so that it is easy for you to what? Recycle. And that's why today, if you look at your pet bottles, Fanta, colorless, and Coke, colorless, Sprite, colorless, right? Now, this, as you see this here, even this case in here, the cup, you understand? It's from a, it's a, it's a plastic with a different density. This one is a plastic with a different density. The wrapper is also a plastic with a different word, density. So when they recycle this, they will separate this one, separate this one, recycle this one separately to form something else. Because this one, the color blue here means that a particular chemical has been added to it to give it that coloration. And in recycling it, you must separate that chemical. But this one now, which is the main plastic, it has no color. And it becomes easier for you to work recycle. So recycling has tremendous benefits. Let's go to the next slide. Now, when you talk about recycling, okay, I, I think this is one of the major aims yeah. of this training, this yeah. particular session. 
Okay, when we talk about them, like yeah. using the greenhouse gas emissions, yeah. okay. and then using that raw material, that yeah. waste, okay. to get something like this. Okay. So I don't know how you can make that recommendation for us, okay. especially the use. I okay. think as opportunities in this green line chain. Okay. How we can ourselves yeah. use such waste okay. to make this. Okay. Because this is very useful, especially in terms of when we are cooking bars. Okay. But it is ready, so you don't need to start making those kind of cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Because the outside doesn't have any effect. Yes. So I don't know the recommendation you can do for us. Okay. How we can convert to the heat now. Yes. Convert that as a best. Okay. You know you need to some techniques. Yes, yes. Okay. So that is what you need. I think um, you know, when it comes to that, it requires a lot of creativity. People go to festival, they learn how to make that. And you can use different raw materials or waste materials based on your creative capacity to you know do something outstanding. I've seen a case where um, people use the, this kind of bottle and then they design something like a tree and you know do a very wonderful design. So it's something that people can really, really learn. All right. Now, when we talk about recycling, there is a very important aspect I want us to look at when it comes to recycling. And I want us to focus on this thing, which is from a linear to a circular economy. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. From a linear to a circular world economy. You want to ask a question? Okay. Now, when you look at, we have three diagrams here. We have linear economy. Let me explain what the linear economy is, which is the traditional thing we have always been doing in every manufacturing. Some of us here may end up becoming owners of a manufacturing plant. You can do whatever you want to do with a manufacturing. But what it means is, for instance, we start with the raw material. Think of any raw material. From the raw material, you move towards production. Your raw material is what you use for your production. Now, once you get your product, what happens? You use your product, right? After using your product, you have waste. All right, that's the end. This is a linear economy. You get your raw material, you produce, you use, and then waste. Straightforward, right? Now, what happens to this waste? This waste does not go back anymore. It is there and it becomes a problem for the environment, it becomes a problem for the society because it is non recyclable. Now, we use the economy, but let's even leave we use the economy, let's move to circular economy. What happens here now? You get your raw materials, right? You carry out your production. After your production, you use your, your product. After using your product, you recycle the waste, and the waste becomes what? A raw material. So what happens? It's going what? Round. Are we together? It's going round. It's going round. So that's why it's called circular what? Economy. So you don't have something that is just left, and then that thing is no longer you know, useful anymore. But in circular economy, your raw material is gotten from your waste that is generated and then it is fed back into the system in order to carry out further work production. So that is the whole concept of what circular economy. Let me quickly uh, just have a question. Okay, so now there is even this concept. I want us to look at this diagram. You have the linear model versus the circular model. Now, in the linear model, you take from Mother Nature. You see that around planet, that's Earth. You take resources from Earth, you make, that is, you produce, you distribute, right? You use and you dump or dispose. That's the linear economy. But circular means you take you make or you remake, you distribute, you use or you reuse or you repair. Are we together? Mm -hmm. And then you selectively dispose and then you recycle. And that recycle also forms part of the world 
material. And that's what circular economy is about. So companies globally are migrating from linear economy towards circular economy. Are we together? And as they're migrating from linear economy to circular economy, they make more money, they generate less waste, all right? And then it opens up a whole lot of opportunities for people. And that is one of the essence of why we are having this presentation. What are the opportunities that are there for someone who is embracing what? Circular economy. Let's go to the next one. Cradle to cradle is still the same thing. Let's keep that. I want to go to the middle of it. You are leaving linear model. Let's move on. Now, I want to talk about where I work. All right? I work with Nature. He's, a, he's an agency under the Federal Ministry of Environment. And essentially what we do is to ensure that companies operate within the extent of environmental laws of the I don't want to say so much, but we enforce laws and regulations of environment in the country. Let's move on from here. Now, this is where I want to uh, base my conversation. This is the meat of our conversation. Green skills for sustainability. Green skills for sustainability. When you talk about circular economy, we are saying we, are, we have moved, or a lot of companies are moving from linear economy to circular economy. First of all, I hope you understand the difference. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the difference mm -hmm. between linear economy and circular world economy? There's a difference, right? Yes, sir. Now, let me just do a, a very short recap. We talked about waste. We identified what waste is. We looked at the various types of waste, right? And with waste, we call waste management. We now talk about waste management. Now that we know what waste is, we can talk about how to manage what waste. And then in managing waste, we now pick one strategy for waste management, which is what? Recycling. And we talk about recycling, what it's about. And then when you talk about recycling, you will naturally delve into the modern era of recycling, which is what we call circular world economy. And we say any production that does not involve recycling is a linear economy, which is what we have been doing all the years past. But today, companies are embracing what? Circular economy. Now, all of this is also called green economy. Because any economy or any operation or practice you carry out that benefits the environment is referred to as what green world economy. Now, with green economy, we also call green skills, all right? Sustainable skills, environment skills, that refers to your ability, your competencies that you possess to engage in environmentally friendly practices that will help contribute to a sustainable environment. <coughs> now, these skills are becoming increasingly important as the world faces challenges that relate to climate change. Green skills are vast. And the beauty about green skills is it does not take away your regular job. There are some of these green skills you can acquire, and then you are still doing your regular job, but it is something that you can do. You protect the environment, as well as advocate for the environment while you are still carrying out your regular job. Now let's look at some of the green skills. You can go ahead and search for them. Now, some of these examples like renewable energy. There are people who have built their capacity to design, install, and maintain renewable energy systems, such as solar. How many of us can handle solar? For how many of us who no. <laughs> Nobody there, or you? No, 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 no. She's the only person. She's the only person. She's the only person. So, bro, your name is Glory. Uh, so, you have a green skill. All right? Can we give her a clap, please? All right, so, so that's a green skill, the ability to handle it. Now, most of us, you see, with this issue of well subsidy removal, everyone's now thinking that, wow, I wish I had a solar, my house is solar power. You understand? I had the and the rest of it. Now that's a green skill. 
because it does not take on the environment. These are our petrol generators and the rest of them. You know stories of people that died because of the smoke that you know, comes out of it. But you have your solar system or your inverter. You don't have any of such challenges. Energy efficiency. Talks about competencies where you optimize energy in your building, transportation, and industry process. If you run a hotel or you run a little bit, whatever it is, energy efficiency is very important. Very, very important. There are people who are experts. They will come and say, what is the total, like, you power this room, this hall, I mean, what is the total energy here? Yeah. Do you really need 20 bulbs? I mean, count how many bulbs are there? How efficient is this room in terms of energy? Hello? Hi. You have wires littered around here. How efficient? Because any place you have wire joining, there is a reduction in energy. So how can you look at this room and you, um, you give a quotation of managing the energy efficiently? in such a way that the owner of this, um, of this hall will now have reduced energy worth consumption. Are we together? Mm -hmm. You calculate your load. That is a practice people now engage in. Then you calculate your load and you reduce energy. You efficiently use energy. What about resource management? Skills that are suitable with resource management. Let me tell you something. Even if you are an event planner, you have been given a job. Somebody is having a wedding. Also, and you are the event manager and the rest of them. How do you manage your resources? How do you use raw materials? How do you, you know, you toss through some of your materials and then you throw them away? It requires creativity. All of these things we're talking about are things that can, you know, it's something you can learn. You can acquire those skills. And these are skills that can help you both now and in the foreseeable future. You have a sustainable agriculture organic farming and the rest of them. How many of us are into that? Circular economy, environmental conservation. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. All right. Green building and architecture. How many of us are into architecture? Yes, you have an architect in the house. You have a builder in the house, a construction person, not around. <laughs> All right, so now if you're an architect or you're a builder, can you adopt environmental sustainability in building, in designing or building or modeling the house? You get what I'm trying to say. So, you see, an architect will say, what is my business to build skills? Well, let me show you. How many of us have seen this uh, spectacular hotel? The one that is in Dubai. Is it called, um, their name is Henry, confusing somebody. I think we have Burj Arab and Burj Khalifa. One is the hotel, one is the, um, just the tall building. But one that looks like a yacht, all right? Yeah, that is in the middle of the water, yes. Now, the architect that designed that building took a lot of environmental consideration. How do you position this house, the windows and the lighting, that if you take less light from outside and then it will not be dark inside the rooms? You know what I'm trying to say? It's a concept. Somebody wants you want to build your house tomorrow. And then you don't go and get anybody to design. And then if the windows are closed, every part of the house is dark. Does it make sense? No. You know what I'm trying to say? So when you build, you understand, and you have the concept, the concept of green skill, you design it in such a way that it can be efficient regarding energy. Because if the house is always dark, what is the implication? Your light will always be what? On. But if you position your windows in a way that your house will be dark, you don't necessarily need your light. No. Unless it is in the night. That's just an example. Now, you have climate change adaptation and mitigation. Sustainable transportation. Now, I added here environmental consultancy, policy and advocacy. Let me ask this question. How many of us come from communities where Maybe it's close to the river, I have sand dredging. Let me see your hand up. Who that dredge, that dredge sand in our rivers? Huh? Okay, yeah, yeah, that one is, you know, now, now, you know, do you know that for me to, for a property to come and dredge sand, they must, they must get environmental permits for them to operate as sand dredgers. 
And do you also know that for them to get that environmental permit, you can set up an environmental consultancy company. Then you get the skills, get the necessary license, and then you can now offer your services to those dredging companies. What about filling stations? What about coal trees? You know that all of these businesses need some form of environmental permits for the other. How many of us have built that capacity so that we can be serving as consultants and making good money for all of this? Let's go to the next slide. I don't want to talk about the Please, let me press that. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Now, for you to apply these green skills, I listed some of the things you will need. Now, you must understand the importance of green, uh, green economy. You must understand the importance of green economy. It is very, very fundamental. You must identify relevant skills like what you mentioned. You must have formal education. It is very, very good. You must take online courses. There are so many courses for environmental sustainability that are free of charge that you can take. You can get some, you know, like I talked about getting, if I, if I want to run an environmental company, I can get my necessary certification from Ministry of Environment, you know, from other agencies, and then I can operate as an environmental and daughter. Very important. Attend workshops and seminars. What you are learning here now is part of it. Read and research. Volunteer, internship, hands-on projects, networking, soft skills, continuous learning. All of these things, if you apply them, these are ways you can build your green skills that can help you for sustainable work and environmental business. Let's go to the next slide. Now, what about recycling jobs? I still tell you that recycling jobs for this and cover many key work opportunities by contributing to a more sustainable future. There are some jobs that you can do. You can be a waste auditor. You can be a zero waste event coordinator. Did I mention something about um, how an event manager can apply green um, skills in the job of event management? But it can be a zero waste event coordinator. You can be a social media influencer advocating for environmental sustainability. You can be an environmental blogger or a blogger. All right. How many of us know about blogging? Blogging. Maybe you have a website where you talk about you know issues that pertain to the society, something like that. Yes. Now you can. I have a friend who is doing very well as a blogger. And this, my friend, decided to focus on one aspect of the environment, push for them, and is making a lot of ways. Now, guess what? International community will you know, get to see some of the posts, and then once in a while, he gets invited to a technical workshop. And what is happening is connecting with people. You know, when we saw our Mr. Pribon, you know, some of these projects, they ask them, okay, now that you won an event, what would you do? What what cost would that be? For some of them, it's okay. I want to be an advocate for the world environment, and then that is just one way where you can actually make a lot of difference when it comes to you know issues about green technology, recycling, and the rest of them. You ask the question about science. Some people can do what we call recycled art creator, where you use some of these recycled, I mean, some of these waste materials, and you creatively convert them to works of art. I've seen someone who used the crown of these uh, Coke bottles, those are crowns, and use it to do a beautiful design, and then now put it in a camera, and it's like an artwork, and you see how much you charge together. So, imagine you have some kind of skill. We tech innovators. Some people are also into what? you know, technology that are sustainable. So that's another way. Environmental educator. What I'm doing here now, I am passing some information. I'm engaged in environmental education. I can decide to do it for a fee. Hello? I can decide to do it what, for a fee. I'm creating awareness, and then I'm also doing it as a career. That's something that somebody can consider. What about composting specialists, e-waste collectors? 
Now, this previous collector, there is a very big business that is going on now. There's a project that happened in Lagos. Okay, it's called the uh, Extended Producer Responsibility UPR project. What does it mean? Now, for electronic waste, the government has reached a kind of agreement with certain organizations funded by an international donor, whereby all of if you have an electronic device, whether it's your phone or your laptop, you have collection centers. You take your product to the collection center. You no longer have to dispose of that product in the gutter or in your trash. You take it to the collection center and then they give you, they, they will assess it and pay you some money. Now, that same device that you would have thrown away, you can now make money from it by selling it and the collectors will buy it from you. And when they buy your electronic waste, they recycle it. And when they recycle this product, they give it now to the same company that manufactures it. And then they will now recycle it and put it back, the components, into their you know, um, processes. So the whole value chain for uh, extended producer responsibility is so high. And people now make money as electronic waste collectors. You have people who also collect uh, plastic bottles. In fact, there was a time I went for a course somewhere. And every morning, I stayed there for a while. I will notice that when I leave my room, by the time I come back, the attendant has taken away all my plastic bottles. So when I ask the attendant that, why do you, what's happening to this plastic bottle? Say, ah, that it's money now that they collect it and they take it to the collection center and then they pay them for you. And that's what happens to plastic, plastic bottles. But in this country, many places are not there yet. So we are beginning to get there. Now, I talked about community cleanup organizers, recycling center attendants, and the rest of them. There are a lot of jobs. But the biggest place you can substitute some of these jobs is getting access to information online and then networking with people. That is one way you can get some of this information and make a significant thing that comes between jobs and just there. And the young people are the ones that are going to tap into it. Let's go to the final slide conclusion. Now, I said recycling is not a goal in itself, but it is an essential tool to better manage natural resources. And I said individuals with green skills can contribute to reducing our ecological world footprint and promote a healthier environment and ensuring a more sustainable world future. So the question I want to ask is, what green skills can you decide to learn today? That's the fundamental question. What green skills can you decide to learn today? Because you can make a whole lot of difference for yourself. And like I said there, irrespective of the job you do, you can acquire a particular word, green skill. You will not only help yourself, you will not only minimize your waste, but you can also earn from there. Thank you all and then uh, thank you. People have um, questions, queries. Okay. What I'll do is to make it more official. I will not take full of questions. That after asking this one, you now remember that it is related to something in your village. You now ask, what if? So full of questions will not come. So how many questions do you have? Questions. Lift up your hand and I'll give you a number. Number one. Number two. And number three, and that ends it. So I have resource person can go and rest and come back tomorrow. He's a talkative. He will talk more tomorrow. So we, we need to give him time to round up, go and rest, and come with fresh tomorrow and give us more of these lectures. Thank you very much. So let's start with number one. Well done, sir, for the lectures. My question is 
all these um, plastic rubbers because I have many in my house. So I want to know what, how to use it and make something or where to dump it and collect some money so that I'll have money. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, is the second question related to this one? Is it related to this one? Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, like I stated earlier, you have um, what to call extended producer responsibility. What that means is the producers of that bottle you use, whether it is your Coke bottle or your pure water bottle, they have the responsibility to take back the bottle and give you some money for it. That's like the whole idea. Now, a program like that is currently ongoing and it is managed by my organization that's what I call FIBRA. FIBRA means Food, I think, uh, the Food and Beverage Alliance. Now, it's an association of all the companies that are into food and beverage, like NBC, NBC means Nigerian Bottling Company, 7up and the rest of them. Now, we are we are having that conversation with them because we already started that of e-waste. E-waste is operational, but only in Lagos State. Now, for these other ones now, it has not fully kicked off in Abuja. You understand? But when that begins to be operational in Abuja, then it's a very simple thing. There will be identified collection centers. You just take your bottle. In fact, at the end of this event now, the person who brought the bottles will pack the bottles and then, you know, take it there and they weigh it and give you some money. In fact, sometimes they also give other incentives other than money. But for now, that's not um, fully um, operational in Abuja. Thank you. Let me, let, let me help her a little. She likes making money. But if you get to, if you get to Nyanya, the Nyanya Bridge, there's a green container, body written, cash for trash. If you go to Babalada, same thing is replicated, cash for trash. So you go there make inquiries. What are you actually taking so I can bring my own trash and make uh, money? So don't be afraid when you see some boys like that, the whole boys like that, cash for trash. Go there and ask them. It might be what you want to throw away is what they want. And you go there and then they measure it for you, depending on the kilograms you have, and then you make money from it. So number two. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, that was uh, an insightful lecture. I have uh, tiny, tiny questions, like three put together. So I'd like to ask the first one. Uh, is that if you can send this slide to our emails, if it is possible. That's number two. Uh, in the linear economy you were talking about, I saw in the very last chain, you said um, you put the non-recyclable waste. You did not put there as waste, because if you put there as waste, I would have said, oh, okay, yeah, it's waste. Maybe these people, they don't know what to do with it. But I want to ask, in that linear economy, yeah. is it the willfulness of the operators of that economy that um, it, uh, it cannot be recyclable or is, sorry, yes, or, or they don't know how to recycle it or is the last level of waste that cannot be recycled or is just their own resourcefulness that they cannot recycle it? It's own resourcefulness that they cannot recycle it. Okay. All right, so it's just that own resourcefulness. But now, you see, business is organic. What am I business being organic? You can start your business and then you are doing that thing. You are operating at a linear level, right? Brother here now, my friend now, has set up the same business you are doing. And that thing you threw away as waste. He's not throwing it away. And it's now a raw material for him. And he's making more profit. You understand? So he is now adopting the circular economy while you are operating the linear economy. What will happen? When you now check that he's making more profit than you are, help me, you will have no choice but to copy his style. So that's why linear economy is beginning to what? Die. You understand? Because business is about competition. If your competitor is making profit, you go and understudy him. I see that, ah, then you will now adapt your process. So some of those so things that they call as trash, and that person is using as a raw material, you go and learn. And tomorrow you will change your model from linear to what? Circular. So that's how it operates. Yeah. Okay, my very last question is uh, 
about biogas. Okay, biogas, yeah. Yes, I know of organizations or companies, yeah. small companies that are converting uh, the bio waste yeah. into gas. Mm -hmm. And then they use that in coal. Yes. I want to ask, is it that there is something wrong with that kind of gas production that uh, government is no longer is not tapping into it? And very big organizations, so very big companies are not tapping into it. It's only very tiny, tiny organizations that are doing it. Okay. Right now, we are still using the LNG, um, but nobody is talking about that biogas. Bio yeah. And then this waste, you know, that we keep seeing, keep piling, and we keep seeing dump sites mm. everywhere. What is happening from the NESRA? What is happening and what's government doing about okay. that? All right. Okay. Uh, let me start with the biogas. Um, first of all, when you look at biogas, you know, we don't operate... Um, in, in most parts of the country, we don't operate a central sewage system. You know what I mean by central sewage system? I mean, regularly, in a quiet bomb, in Port Harcourt, if you build your house, you must build your soak away. That's your property. You dig your eight feet or something and you put it there. But in some countries, you don't do that. Every house, there is a pipe or a tunnel that takes all those sewage to a central sewage system where it is processed and treated. Now, for countries that have that level of advancement, it is easy for them now to have a huge chunk of biogas that they can now convert to energy and transport that energy to homes. You understand? But in the case of our country, you don't have that kind of system. So now, you have your property. I have my property. I have my sewage. You have your sewage. Government may not be able to come and begin to set up a biogas model for everybody. But I can decide to go and acquire the skills and then I'll now convert my sewage, you know, in such a way that I can tap biogas from it and power my home. You know what they do in biogas? You make sure there is no air that comes out of it. It is airtight. And now, let me take it so um, granular. You see your poop, what comes out of your poop or shit? There's methane gas in it. You understand? There's methane in it. So when you now cover it in such a way that air is not allowed to come in, you understand? It will now decompose. When it decomposes, it will now bring out methane. That methane now will pass through a pipe and then, you know, the other process it, it will power your home. People are doing it. So perhaps what the government can do is to maybe make the technology accessible to people teach people so that people can learn how to do this and begin to convert it. But on a large scale, the government may not be able to have that because our system is so distributed that you cannot have a central um, you know, biogas system. Now, talking about waste, somebody asked me this question yesterday that what is my organization doing regarding municipal waste? Because dump sites in our lesson, they fall under which category? Uh, I mean, all those things you see around the streets, they fall under municipal waste, right? Good. Now, the challenge is this. Uh, every state in Nigeria has environmental protection agency. In Abuja, it's called AEPB. What is AEPB? Abuja Environmental Protection Agency. In Lagos, I think it, Lagos State is called, um, is it LASEPA? Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency. What is it called in a fire bomb state? If you get them, I will give you high five. Uh, eh? Cassava. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Now, their mandate is basically on municipal waste. And what are municipal waste? I say waste that are generated in the city. That's their mandate. Now, what does the federal government do? The federal government has the responsibility to provide what you call national guidelines. Through the Federal Ministry of Environment and through agencies like my own, we enact laws. That laws are for the nation, national laws. Now, each state will adopt that law and domesticate it. And then there is what you call, um, in football, everybody's sabi waiting that they call, uh, what do you call it? Every player has his own role. Abi, segmentation of responsibility. So that's called deniliation of responsibility. There's the role federal government plays. There's the role state government plays. You understand? 
in terms of monitoring the activities of companies to make sure they do not affect the environment negatively. That is the responsibility of the federal government. Because every company that violates, whether in Akwa Ibom or in um, Abuja, the federal government can sue that company. And the federal government can sue through agencies like my own or the Ministry of Environment. But the role of the state is to make sure that municipal waste is properly what managed. So Federal Ministry of Environment or her agencies cannot delve into municipal waste. It is the responsibility of state government. But we can synergize with them. That's why every state have their sanitation wards, days, and their sanitation laws. But unfortunately, you know, there are a lot of gaps which we even enumerated here that a lot of challenges when it comes to handling waste. Poor governance, weak institutions, and the rest of them. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for Thank you. Um, that wonderful lecture. Thank so you. I happen not to be around to you know, get all that all of it, yeah. um, you've mentioned. Um, let me ask this. Okay. In um, recycling some of these waste, yeah. um, I, we, we were made to understand that um, then, um, how do we get this Environment because uh, to some extent, like in Nigeria, uh, you might not have the opportunity to, you know, relate to the governments to get some of these equipment that yeah. you can use to recycle these waste. So, um, is is there any agency in Nigeria that um, government have set aside that okay, if you want to be maybe um, a waste collector, you do it privately that you can liaise with them and then get some of the aids that you need to do the recycling. Okay. That is one too. Um, you just addressed some part of um, my second question in your last submission. Okay. Uh, we we get to see waste, you know, dump site closer to residential areas. And if you maybe take census of people that are living there, you see that some of them have some health challenges. It could be cholera, maybe yeah. resistant and malaria and type and all that. Mm -hmm. um, how can your agency also, mm. you know, come in to say that, okay, each dump site, there are maybe meters of residential areas all close to. Example, if you go to Carol, that's Nyaya houses, mm. before that Equa Church, you see houses around there and there is a dump site there. Okay. Most of the people living there are not healthy. So what can I do? <laughs> I, I, I can say you know, um, <laughs> 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 I know. I know okay. because of, you know, um yeah. the council and all that. So okay. what will government do to address such um situation? Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Um one of them is advocacy anyway. Like I have said, in delineating roles and responsibility, there are certain responsibilities that are the statutory mandate of the state environmental protection board and then there are some that are the mandate of the federal agencies all right and unfortunately municipal waste falls under state but what does the federal government you know do what, what role do they play one of them is advocacy all right like in advocacy i know that at several points my agency had visited a number of areas within FCT to carry out what we call sensitization, all right? We go, we've been to Wuse Market, all right? We've been to, um, what do you, just name them. Any of these big plazas, we've been there. We've been to Nyanya Market, my organization. We've been there. Create awareness, sensitize people. We've been to abattoirs. I didn't even mention abattoirs because that one affects virtually everybody. I mean, I don't know how many of us that go to cold room to get, uh, but most of us go to the market. If our ladies will go to the abattoir and make sure they price down that meat. How are those meat, you know, how are those animals, kid, what is the, what is the, um, what is the environment like? You understand? I visited an abattoir when I went for inspection some time ago in a Boeing state. And in fact, for a long time, I felt like I should stop eating meat. 
You understand? As in, it was that bad. It was that bad. You understand? You know? And then you go there. And then you see the operations there. And you're like, wow, what's really happening in this country? So we go there and we carry out sensitization. And sometimes we do this sensitization even with the state body. Even these laws that are called federal laws, the federal government will not sit down and develop these laws. We will invite all the state agencies and will sit together and develop the law. The rule is this. Federal government sets the standard. The state can either make it higher, but it cannot be lower than the standard of federal what, government. So advocacy, I repeat, are one of the things we do. You understand? We advocate. And then sometimes, if we also notice that there is an infraction, we can also go ahead to take some measures. We've had situations where people complained, and then our agency will receive the complaint and then take action on the defaulting um, body. But of a truth, these state agencies need to wake up. All right? Now, coming to the issue of recycling, I want to posit here that um, this is a good opportunity for the ESCOs, the current ESCOs, you understand, to maybe have um, like an advocacy visit to the state, however it can be done, I was looking at your list of members on that wall, and then I saw some very notable people. In fact, I saw my former boss, um, Dr. Sam. Um, yes, Ababio. He was a director in my organization. You know, people can have, you know, Lagos is attracting a lot of um, support, incentives from overseas. Aquabom State can do the same. Now, what if you have such kind of advocacy, and then your governor is able to bring in some international partners and then they set up a recycling plant in a quiet bomb state would that not bring more jobs to the youths of the state it will bring more jobs to the youths of the state it will make sure that your you know your waste are properly what managed recycling is very broad you can focus on plastic waste recycling you can focus on fabric recycling you can focus on um, you know you name it you understand so you can have that advocacy, and that's the importance of having this kind of thing, where you team up, visit the governor, visit the commissioner. Who says one person here cannot be an advisor or so? You understand? Because all of these are like a rallying point where you voice out what your concerns are, and then the state government can take it up and, you know, look into it, and it brings development to the people. So it's something that you can also, what, take back to the um, state government and then, you know, push some advocacy and agencies like Nesha can also come in in that electronic waste um, I mean in the EPRU model there are some states that were put at pilot a quite bomb state can also advocate and say we want this kind of um, arrangement in our state and it's going to help the state in no small measure I hope I answered your question yeah thank you Round of applause. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you is not enough for this presentation that, that has come to us free of charge. We've not got any money. Yeah. He has delivered it free of what? Charge. Yeah. And what we have taken now, whether it is free of charge or you paid money for it, don't joke with it. It can help you tomorrow. Like she asked the question, how can I make money with my waste? Start thinking of how to make money with what? you are generating. The issue of our country is fragmentation. If we can, all of us can come together and say, let us make a smart city, and then we connect all our houses together, like you said, to a particular chamber, then that chamber can generate energy for that smart city. But if I have a house and I say, I fence my house around, and all the things I need in my house is in my house, and this other person does it, how can we do it? We cannot do it. So the better we understand ourselves, the better we orientate ourselves, the better for the society and for even the generations to come. Please put your hands together once again for the And uh, Before we share the refreshments, because we have a little refreshment for all of us, I will call the youth leader for a response. Youth leader, please. Thank you. According to the response, let me, let me target very well, both of times. But I know it speaks very long. Let me give him two <laughs> minutes to listen for this single level of facts. Yeah. Yeah.
Imaniso. Yeah. Build the youth. Build the nation. Build the nation. Build the youth. I'm so happy that indeed we have come to build the nation through this green skill technology given to us today. I before I thank you, let me get the last the second to the last alphabet. We have National Environmental Standard Regulation Was Agency. Enforcement Agency. Please let us at this juncture clap once again for the leadership of NEPA for giving us such a wonderful resource person who is well loaded. Indeed, he has spoken authoritatively as an authority in that field. And I want to thank him and appreciate him, just like my deputy have said, the chairman of this planning committee, what we have gotten free of charge is something we need to pay heavily in a normal circumstances. But because of his love and passion for youth's emancipation, he has decided to do this for us without charges. Can we have it done for one second? I am humble because without the leadership of a quite community, we will not have a platform like this. People have sponsored us, people contributed. Through the leadership of Barista and Yen Pyongipa, led administration of a quite community in Abuja, we are just a week. Which he has decided to push us forward. He was still seated, and he has gone to the meeting, sir. So, without him, without his support, we will not be where we are today. So, ladies and gentlemen, can we at this juncture appreciate the leadership of our community led by the President of the And may I also thank the Chairman of the Planning Committee and all the members who have sacrificed their time and resources to ensure we have this package. Yesterday we were in the Jabi Lake. We had a lot of fun. Some of us drive bicycles just to make happiness part of our life. Of course, it's an happy hour. Here we are in the region. So, thank you very much, the planning committee, for such a wonderful package. And for this skill that we have achieved, I want to believe that we will advocate more and more until we see the value, the, the value that we have impacted in us through that chain. As my sister has said, how do we get cash for the trash? So we we'll get cash for the trash and then... But as the people, we will continue to make recommendations, sir. As my, one of my uh, colleagues has asked here, why is government not actually seeing this as a point? Yes. My deputy attempts to answer that. Yes, we understand that everything brought back to the master plan of the city from the institute where it was emanated from. If it was not properly designed for such channels, then it would become very difficult for us to get the emission of this gas, getting value and then economy out of it. But then, in the in the better capital city. There are some strategic districts. I want to be part of them in Asukure here, in um, Utako Axis, where we have this design of sewage. And we are also paid heavily every year for the management of this sewage disposal. So the security must begin at home. The journey of a thousand man must begin with a system. So if government through NESRA now, can also make this advocacy by this recommendation that they can start something small within the city that has this proper channel of sewage disposal as an effort to achieve the green scheme of the United Nations. It will do us and also provide job for the team in population of the EU. Ladies and gentlemen at this juncture, let us once again appreciate all of you. Thank you yourself for making this this event. Don't forget that tomorrow is going to be the, the grand finale. The chairman, please, get names of those who have participated in this skill today. Tomorrow we are going to recognize them. Okay? Because the knowledge that they have achieved, they have
started today will not be a waste. God help us with partnership with Nesra. We want to build a partnership now between the Kwaibo community in Abuja, not just the youth wing, and Nesra, and see how we can get the best national benefits. The president has asked me to thank you when I went out to meet him that our lecture is very powerful. In fact, if not that they have the meeting, all of them will want to be here. So he has sent his own appreciation on behalf of the community to you as our resource person and the Nezra as the agency. May God continue to bless you and may God continue to improve our green skill. So as long as we keep our environment clean, the land will continue to be green. God bless you.